So we are going to be taking a look at details in this section of the series here. We're going to take our exterior walls that we have. Only We've only got a few here. Corners and straights mostly, but we have doors and windows. Only two windows that are as plain and basic as you get, but we'll do, um, we can cover how to make more rounded windows and different kind of, different style windows too. We'll, we'll have a look at some reference and see how we could model them out. But in this, we're mostly going to be making some capping for the bottom. I kind of covered it actually in this guy here I done off camera a while back, just kind of playing with some options. The way we have like stone capping here on the bottom and the top. Now they were just kind of thrown together. I didn't put a lot of thought into them. You'll notice here as well actually that um, the way this corner set up, I have this, well this was done for UV purposes. But a great thing is because we have these polys here, we can actually copy them into a, another corner object. Thing that we're going to use, we're, we're definitely going to need something like this. Because if you notice when we have, let's say we wanted to make this window here into a corner piece. At the moment all we have is this one. So if I just turn my snap on and give you an example of what I'm doing here. For us to have a window on a corner, we can't, we're kind of stuck with the way things are currently here. These are our options. We can have the window here, and I could duplicate that and rotate this 90, 90 degrees there and snap that backwards. So that's a corner unit. But let's say we wanted to have our window closer into this corner, somewhere here. At the moment we can't do that because if we remove this corner block and let's say we bring this wall unit up, let's bring the window with them, we're left with this gap here. So we'd need to model something there, but we can't because it's too small. Well we could, but it, we don't have to, I guess, what I'm trying to stuttering and trouble some but because of the way we made this piece here, all we need to do actually would be to copy these polys and they will fill that gap perfectly. So I'll just copy top and bottom here. Control D a copy out. I'll snap it back actually because I want to keep the pivot where it is and I'll just press P and separate that by selection. And now that little corner gap will fill in everything that we want to make a corner out. And it's perfectly seamless as well. So I guess I, I showed you that as an example of what we're going to do, but there you go, we just done it. it. It's that quick and easy. I'll keep him. There's another thing I wanted to cover as well, by the way. I don't need these anymore. That was examples. I'll add some back faces onto him, but for the moment I'll just add him with the bunch. Um, somebody had asked me a very good question actually regarding these textures. Uh, let's take this white paint for example. So somebody had asked me like, it's great that, you know, if, if you're lucky enough to come across the perfect texture, let me just shade this flat for a sec. No, shade it smooth, round it off a bit better. Um, if you're lucky enough to find the perfect texture uh, in the first go, you know, that's great, but chances are you're not going to. So. The question asked basically is what if you have the perfect texture but you want it in a different color? Is that possible to um, kind of manipulate in Photoshop or Krita or something like that? And the answer is yes. Now it kind of depends on the texture itself. We got lucky with this because if I bring up actually let me just drag Krita in here. I have the file open here. So if I, um, if I look at this we got lucky with this texture because it's a white color. It's easy to manipulate white into a color. It's not so easy to manipulate a color into a different color. So in the case of say this, um, say this plaster, say we wanted that in like a blue, but you didn't want to get rid of the likes, those little scratches are kind of important to add a little bit of age and kind of degradation onto the, the texture you're going for. So how would you then turn this into a different color but keep those tiny details there intact? 
I think what I can do would be to... I'll duplicate the layer to start with. Okay, so in Cryo to duplicate a layer, you just go down and click this button here. That makes a copy of the layer I wanted, and this is the layer I'm going to turn into a mask, so I can retain those little details and stuff here. Now, let's say, let's just kind of turn him off for a second, okay? I'll come back to him. Now, how do I change the color of this map? Well, what I could do would be, I'll make a new layer. This little plus button here will give me a brand new layer. And I want to paint only into this section. So, to lock my selection of what I want to paint into this corner, I'll just hover over that previous layer here, and I'm going to hold Control and click on the icon. And that will only select active, um, how would you say it, pixels that are currently in use. Because if you remember, like, we kind of cut out the rest of that map. There's no image there at all. It's just this top section. So with that selected, I'll go to my paint fill. And let's say we wanted like a blue paint again, okay? So we'll select the blue color and we'll just fill it. Now that'll give us like a perfect blue color. But now how do we blend that with the layer below to get those details back? If we go to uh, the layer drop down here, we want to maybe change the layer to color. And that'll give us a hue, but color will not always be what you want because you can't get much darker than this. This is like the bluest we're going to get when it comes to that. But you'll notice that the way this uh, blend layer works, it's going to take darker values and it's going to darken them. Like the, the color will be stronger in the darker values. We kind of want the opposite for that. So the best way I've found to do this would be change the color blend layer to multiply. And that'll give you like an even one. Um, it's still a little darker here, but they're the ones we want to preserve. But you can see by using the layer opacity now, I can kind of control how blue this, this paint layer is going to be. So say we wanted like a mid-level strand paint here. Let's just go with something like that. Now how do I cut out those little black bits again? Well, the previous um, copy layer i done, I'll turn off the uh, blue paint here. So you see i got two of these, right? The copy of the painted plaster layer. I want to turn this into a mask, so I'm just going to rename this one Mask, so I know which one is which. And with that, I want to kind of tweak these levels so that the black black areas stand out more and the white areas, they, they kind of turn whiter, okay? So we can do that by changing, if I go to Filter, Adjust, go to Levels, and in the level um, sliders here, you want to just kind of bring the white in a bit, and that'll whiten your whites and then with the middle slider you just bring that towards your your white end here and that'll darken the darker layers then and then you kind of find a balance here so by bringing this down towards the center of this uh, slider it's really going to make those black areas pop out and i can kind of compress this to the i want to get some of those subtle little black details back in but not too much maybe something like that so that's going to be my mask layer and now with that i'll just press ok and i'll right click on mask and i'll say convert convert to transparency mask and now you see that will kind of it's hard to tell on a white layer so i'll turn my paint layer back on and you can see what that's doing it's kind of it's cutting out the blue shapes so with that then i can just drag my transparency layer onto the paint layer and it becomes a mask of that layer so now there's no blue where that mask was. So that's a it's a pretty good way to to judge that. You know, so we still have our, our detail there. But we still have our scratches too. So it's not going to look like we just kind of slapped the blue layer over that. So let's actually just save this out as a copy here. I'm just going to save this and go back into Blender. So there you can see the modified blue paint job we have and we still have our little subtle details there as well our scratches and bumps and stuff so that's um it's not the best way to do it I ideally you'd kind of want to be using like a procedural way of texturing to to get this looking as as good as possible but it's not a bad substitute if there's no if there's no other way you know like it's kind of convincing enough i guess for what it is but let's say quickly now um let's say the, this wood here let's say we wanted blue wood we know that it's going to be difficult because it's like i said it's easy to go from white to a different color it's hard to go from 
another different color to a color okay so how would we do that well i'll go back into crowder here quickly and ideally i'm still doing that oh my god number five ideally what we want is the exact same way we've done this okay i'm just going to turn this off for the moment this blue layer and we can see from the start we had a white layer and we turned that blue so we want to do exactly the same thing here only kind of reversed to this into white first and then turn it blue and we can do that pretty handy so let's go to our wood texture with that i want to copy this because remember like it's best to work on a copy don't kind of destroy your layer so i'll duplicate this and turn off the original and with this i want to desaturate it okay so we'll desaturate that by going to filter adjust and just click desaturate and stick to lightness is fine okay so there you go we've now got a black and white image it's more so black than it is white so we can use overlay layers now to actually um kind of pump this up a little so i'll make another layer here and i'm just going to fill this with my fill tool i'll just fill it white and then from the drop down i'm going to turn this to overlay and you can see it's after getting a little brighter so if i turn that off you can see that white that white will kind of lighten the whole thing underneath it but again it's still not white enough so we can actually just instead of doing all that again we'll just hit this duplicate button and there we go now we can see roughly the value of this is the same as that we could go lighter but we might start losing a little of that detail that we want to keep see that's way too bright now so i'll remove that we'll stick with the two what i'll do is with the top layer Select it, I'll hold control and select the two layers below, right click and merge with layer below. So that'll turn everything into one layer. And now from there I can do the same setup. So I'll create a new layer. I will, actually I need to duplicate this first. Remember we need, we need a mask. And with the paint layer, I will grab a blue color. Let's actually go opposite blue. Let's go somewhere orange just to see how this looks in, in Blender. I'll fill that and I'll turn it to multiply. Now I'll hide that, I'll grab the mask layer and I will go to filter, adjust, levels. And I'll kind of do the same thing I've done. I just want to find a, a mid layer or a mid level between having as wide as possible, but we want a little bit of detail there. So it kind of looks like it's faded. It'll look more like chipped paint on wood really than anything depends on how much of that uh, darker you want into it that darker color so I'm just going to select that for the moment I'll go with that and I will right click this and I'll say convert to transparency mask now I'll turn my paint layer on and you can see that effect on it I'll actually just drag that mask into the paint layer and now I can adjust the opacity of the paint And with this, I think, maybe if you wanted a little, a little stronger, if we just duplicate that and turn this into a multiply, it'll kind of bring up those darker levels. So let's just go with it, something like that for the moment. Um, I'll be undoing all of this, by the way, just to get back. I'm only doing this to show how it's done. Uh, I want to bring my blue layers back, so let's just save that out and see how that looks. So inside Blender, all I need to do is go to my shader and I'll re-import that texture. And there we go. It looks absolutely awful. <laughs> but just to show that it can be done, I think. It doesn't actually look very orange. It looks more like um, a very pale wood, I think. But it's not a bad effect. So playing around inside Crytek can actually give you some pretty, pretty good, uh, well, you learn a lot from it, but you kind of get some surprising results from it as well. So that's just to show you quickly how to roughly manipulate textures to kind of get them to be a, a different color. So with that, I'm just going to get back onto, um, I'm going to remove this and load back up the file and we get on to adding some detail onto the exteriors. 
Okay, so we're back in Blender. Now that that's covered, I'm going to get on to actually just uh, just detailing this stuff up. So we kind of extracted this corner piece. We're not going to do a lot, whole lot with it for the moment, but I will just uh, I want to duplicate it, and I want to give this piece some some uh, back faces just to kind of keep it visible from all angles if we ever need it. So I'm just going to remove the top and bottom of this, so I'll delete faces, and I will rotate this. 180. Now I can just move it back and I'll go into edit mode, go to vertices, select all, active select the top corner and I want to switch my snap to vertex with active and then I'll press G and just snap that to my main object. It saves me kind of um, re, re UV and all that kind of extra stuff. Now I can just join these, go OK, and I'll weld vert. So tab 1 for verts, 8, select everything, right click, merge verts by distance, and remove date. So that's our extra piece there, ready to go whenever we need it. So I'm going to start detailing this now with a, a corner unit. So I'll move him off, I'll go back to increment, I'll just move him out of the way for the moment. And I want to grab this corner piece here. I'm going to make a copy of him because he might get destroyed in the process. So make a proxy and bring him over. And we're going to start with uh, some kind of like block effect on the corner here. Just a, a decorative touch. And then we'll do something along the bottom and along the top. I might do that in another video though because I'm trying to keep this one here as short as possible. So quickly we can add to this. I'm going to press Shift A and make a make a cube where did that land oh wow okay over there why not let's bring him over here what the all right gotta do some creative kung fu here so i'm just gonna grab this this ace and i'll go up to mesh and snap. I want to snap cursor to selected. I'm going to press Q and go to all transforms. Just reset everything back. And now I'll right click at set origin to 3D cursor. And then I'll press Alt G, snap him to the grid. So he's sitting on the grid where he should be. And now I can go into a top view. And I will keep snap on. I'm going to move him over to the corner. So now when I scale this down, it should scale down uniform. I'm gonna come out of snap actually because I want this to be a little, a little, fr just just covering the outside of the brick like that. Right. So again, I'm going to right right click, snap cursor to select it. I want to reset the transform for this again because we scale this down. So all transforms, and now I'll right click, set our origin back to 3D cursor. So now when I start modifying this, I can click them, take the top, top face there, you can't really see it because it's in the wall, but I'll go to item and set the Z value for this to 2. This will bring me halfway up the wall here. And I'm just going to start adding some subdivisions into this. So I'll give myself three. I want to have four in total here, I think. So three subdivisions on this. And you can probably see already where I'm going with it. I'm going to be making like stone capping that kind of covers the corner. So they're not normally, if I look from the front, it's, I think that may be a little too long here. So I'm actually going to start deleting what I don't need. So I'm going to just keep the front and side here. You can see the back is still there. I'll press Control i to invert that X and delete faces. Now, I want to deal with the length here. Instead of doing this one by one, I'm probably getting it wrong. I'm just going to rely on cuts here. So I'll add three edge loops onto the front and the side. And I don't need these. Okay, so I'll get rid of the two innermost edge loops on each side. 
X and remove face. No, what am I doing? Uh, dissolve edges. So there we go. Now I can take polygon tool here and I'll just get rid of the second and fourth poly there. So I'll remove faces. What I will do is I will remove the shorter ones completely. I'll press highlight them, press P and separate selection. Now I can remove these edges entirely. So X dissolve edges. There we go. Now I can join them back. J. Now because they're uh, separated, they're joined but they're not welded anymore at the vertex. So if I select all, actually before I do that, I'm going to give it a solidify modifier. And that's going into the wall. So I want to bring the value into the negative here and make sure even thickness is turned on. Okay, so with that I can just apply and now I'm just going to select the out facing polygons of each each of these and I'll press I to inset and I'll inset each one now that's insetting individually I don't want that so I'll do that again so now we want to bevel this and I think maybe the best way to bevel this into shape would probably be... I'm sure there's an easier way to do this actually, but I'm just gonna do it the way I'm used to. I'm gonna add an edge loop into the center of these. And then with that, this edge that's on the, the rim of it, I'm going to select each one. And X to dissolve. Dissolve edges. And there we go. We have a nice bevel on them now. So if I can take them and duplicate them up. That's looking alright. Okay, so I won't duplicate yet. To save me having to unwrap everything twice. I'll just unwrap this first and then duplicate. Trying to soften it the corner a bit. So control B to bevel it. And maybe from there I'll select Actually I need to select the whole edge. I want to select everything right through, so I'm going to select them as a loop. And then I'll hold shift and I'll just unselect the spine joint, if you want to call it that, of these bricks. And now that will basically cut these and let me un unfold everything flat these also need to be selected so I'm just holding shift and alt and clicking those edges right so that should give us a pretty nice result a right click mark a seam and now press A, U, and unwrap. And that gives us a pretty nice unwrap here. So I'm going to I'll go into UV editing. And I want to change my background image here. I'll go with AO1 diffuse, because I know that has some rock on it. I'm thinking I might actually work with these. Actually, yeah, these might be perfect for it. So What I'm thinking now is I'll take the two smaller sets here and I'll rotate them and I'll bring them down in here. I'm going to actually just go work on one at a time. I want to actually visualize this here though so I'll, I'll give it new material, set that material to Atlas 01. While I'm here I might as well just tag in so too in case I want to change 
For the moment, though, I don't. I'll just work with what I have. So I'll select each of these and I'll bring them up. I'm going to scale this down. And I'll try to fit it to these blocks as best as possible. Okay, I'll need to use my uh, transform tool here for this. I'll just bring it down. And maybe I'll bring out these edges so that it might stretch it a little. I'll have to see how it looks. Okay, it doesn't actually look great. But I'll get the other ones in and we can uh, see it together and maybe judge then. I want to keep, I don't want to unwrap everything on the same point of the map either as well, so I'll give this a different section, but with the same idea, I'll just stretch it out to meet the borders of these blocks. Alright, let's try this guy. So I need to rotate him. Scale them. Yeah, just move them somewhere random. Okay, I think actually when they're all together, it doesn't look too bad. Try this guy. Dark cavities here. This looks nice. Okay, I just noticed something as well. I want to have a look. At the moment, I'm kind of joining the very innermost part of these unwraps with the crease, which it's kind of what I've been doing to get that darker transition between materials, but I'm thinking because that brick, that wall texture on the actual brick wall itself is quite dark, it might not. Or yeah, in this case, it's too much. So I might need to downscale these a touch, all of them. So I'll select all, and I want to go up here because I want if I just downscale each of these as is. It'll downscale them all as one, but I wanted to downscale them based on their own origin point. So I'll go up here to pivot, set this to individual origins, press S and scale. There we go. Okay, so how does that look? Better. That looks okay. Right, we go back to modeling tab here. And with that, I'll select it and press Shift D to duplicate and move him to the top. And there you go. That's our first little bit of detail done on the corners. So I'll keep one corner as is, and I will keep one with extra detail on it there. So I'll join that to the corner piece here so it shares the same pivot. Control J. And now I will just move him over. Okay, so I think this video has gone on a bit too long already, so I'm actually going to leave that there. And on the next one, we will look at making capping for the top and the bottom of these walls. We're just going to start with a simple, um, just a straight, a simple straight wall like this. And then once I have that done on there, we could copy it over, do it the way we've done everything. I'll just, for the corners, I'll use the shear tool and then we'll fix up the, the UVs on it. But for the moment, I'm happy enough with uh, what that looks like. So yeah, I suppose I'll catch you in the next one.